All right. Um, very timely prayer. It's uh, interesting, I think, sometimes, you know, when someone is praying and I'm as, as you're praying, I'm thinking along with you. And if you know what the lesson is about today, how relevant that prayer is. Um, and so we want to we want to take a look at the book now. And for those of you who uh, are not here this morning, want to give you an opportunity to send a card, if you will, to Tim Connett. His address is 6063 Meadow Bank Way, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80925, and his phone number, 941-587-9630. You might have to play that back a time or two, but that's what it is, and, and we're told he enjoys conversations and getting cards and what have you. And let's remember each other. Uh, during this time. Um, that's one of the things I love about this, this class. We call each other, we keep up with each other. Um, uh, Jerry sent me uh, an article. Um, she knew I had this rotator cuff thing. She sent me an article that appeared in uh, Mayo Clinic magazine. I mean, it, thinking of each other and doing things, keeping into contact, let people know we love them. So we're uh, going through some stuff. And uh, as we look through the lesson this morning, uh, we'll be looking at Isaiah chapter 6. Um, we, we started with Isaiah last week, but we're going to be seeing some things going on here in today's lesson as we do each week that are so relevant for us today. And that's something we talk about from time to time. I just love to, to consider the context of uh, when things were happening, how God spoke to his people, and how God speaks to us. You remember last week, we, we talked about God confronts, and he was getting all over people last week for the way they had responded um, to his goodness and just totally turned their back on him. Today, we're looking at Isaiah 6, 1 through 13, and the title of the lesson this morning is God Sends. And as you read through the scripture, that is certainly something that you pick up on, but the, you, you wonder, why in the world is God sending this guy to do what he's sending him to do. I mean, you look at it, and, and unless we stop and think about it, um, and part of, part of the deal is God keeps his promises. If he promises good stuff, it happens. If he says, but if you don't get in, uh, get in the boat with me, it's going to be rough. Promise you. We're going to see some of that today, see how that is relevant to us. The, the subtitle is God Calls His People. Who else would he call? You know, every now and then he uses folks that are not really all that willing and are not really his people, but God calls his people to what? To recognize and, and we, we hit on these words because if, if you read your sentence too quickly, you don't, you don't realize, you don't recognize that there's a lot going on in that one sentence. To recognize, and not only that, but declare his sovereign purposes. We are to share with others God's purposes. And as we listen for God's purposes, we want to know what his purpose is for us individually, don't we? Because we want to do that. We want to do that. Um, the um, One of the first questions they ask here, why does God call on and then use believers to carry out his purposes? How would you respond to that? 
Why does God call on and then use believers to carry out his purposes? Who else would he use? Whom else would he call yeah, and use? What yeah. Thinking. What are you going to do? Carol, did you have another comment? Yeah. And sometimes we don't listen all that well, but you're absolutely right. Um, if if we don't do God's purposes, and if he doesn't call on us to do it, we don't feel led to do it. And there's more than just feeling led. We'll talk about that in a minute. It probably won't get done. I, yeah, Kitty, did you? It's our responsibility out of love for God to be his hands and feet here on earth. You know, exactly. Um, Kitty says that it's our responsibility to be the hands and feet of Christ here on earth. And so many times we make the comment and hear the comment, God works through his people in so many ways. Now, a lot of times he'll do a miracle of some kind, things that only he can do. But he also works through us if what? If we allow him, if we get out of the way, let him work in our lives, and we want to follow him. And basically what he's talking about this morning is clean them up and send them out. God's people. we got to get right. But the... Um, uh, what, what we're seeing here, they say Isaiah's call to prophetic ministry doesn't come until chapter 6. Well, that's today. Um, he was leading up to, in the first five chapters of Isaiah, what leads up to the prophetic ministry. And uh, in the, uh, we want to go ahead and, and talk about what he has promised, what he has done, um, we know that uh, he, he talked about the vineyard last week. Isn't that what we did? His people and all that he's done to bless his people. And what did they do? Turn it back on him. Every time I read something like that, every time I see what's going on in our country today, I say, boy, have we turned our back on the Lord or what? It's absolutely amazing. Some of the things that are going on. And when a police officers get shot, they're trying to take them to the hospital and people get in the way of the ambulances and won't let them through. Let them die. Something is wrong in paradise. We've got to turn back to God. That's the basic answer. To the questions. Bob, briefly. The, the thing that gets to me is it's Black Lives Matter. Yeah. And they actually have two anthems in Pobolia now. One for the blacks and one for the rest. Yeah, yeah. Just can't agree with Yeah. Um, so many things and even uh, have maybe have a nice name attached to them, mm -hmm. but don't really stand for what they would like you to believe. Well, let's, let's take a look. We're taking a look, first of all, at God's glory. And this is what Isaiah is um, seeing in, in, uh, as he uh, thinks about and envisions the Lord and sees what God has in store for him. Um, verse 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, which was about 740 years before Christ, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Now, let's take a look at who Uzziah was. I have a little definition here I think would be helpful. Uzziah, king of Judah and contemporary of Isaiah, also called uh, Azariah, okay? a relatively good king who did what was right in the sight of the Lord, with the exception of failing to remove the high priest when he was told to do so. Huh? I'm sorry, the high places that were places of worship to other gods. Um, so, Uzziah, pretty good guy. None of us do everything just right. So, and... Part, except for Marilyn, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, 
Um, he wants something very special for lunch today, okay? All right. He's going to get it. All right. I get that a lot. You're going to get it. <laughs> no. uh, all right. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne. As we see where he is seated, and the hem of his robe filled the temple where Isaiah sees this going on. What does that tell us? Does it, does it tell you anything as you're reading that? What does that mean? Saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Huh? He was set apart. I mean, yeah. Majestic. Yeah. See, oh, he, he was so set good. apart, so holy and wonderful and great, and what? Majestic. Majestic. And his yes, Paul. It's, uh, it's the, the Lord is on our mission, on the presence. Yeah. He's in every place. Yeah. And it, yeah. And this, this is the same thing that we hear now, or we know now. The Lord is all over. He's right with us right here. He's in us, our breath. All right. He's breathed with his breath. And he is closer. And that's, that's what I think he's indicating, that it's, his presence is all through the temple. Yeah, and Paul says it has to do with omnipresence of God Almighty. And in fact, he is everywhere. And he filled the temple wherever he is in his, his the, the hem of his garments, the um, hem of his robe filled the temple. So we see the awesomeness of God here as um, Isaiah is seeing it and describing it to us. We sometimes just forget, don't we? One, it's impossible, isn't it, for us to know how awesome God is, but to have some understanding just by looking at the words and how he lives in our lives and our hearts. How awesome God is. Amen, right? Amen. Amen. All right. God is in charge. That's another concept there. Now, um, as, as he is looking, Isaiah sees in verse 2, seraphim. Seraphim. What in the world are seraphim? A type of angel. A type of angel-like creature, angel or whatever. Burning ones, they are called, with wings, burning ones. Yeah, angelic creatures. Seraphim were standing above him. Um, typically, you see the seraphim below looking up, but in this structure, the seraphim of there worshiping God as well. They had... Uh, they each had six wings. With two, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. With two, they flew. The two sets of wings were used to show deference to God. It was normal to cover one's feet and face in the presence of royalty in ancient Mesopotamia. But he was standing there and, and saw the fullness of God and the seraphim and the majesty and the greatness, the brilliance of it all. Whew! Know what I mean? Yeah, that mm. almost makes you say hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. All right. Holy, holy, holy. We're going to get that right now. Here it comes. And one called to another. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of armies. His glory fills the whole earth. Now, what does glory mean? Has a, has a lot of applications, but what are some that you think of when you think of the word holy in reference to God Almighty? I think of life. Perfection. Uh, Perfection. And love. Love. love light. Yeah. And he is totally set apart. Mm -hmm. Totally unique. Nobody like. Now, what does it mean? One thing to be holy. We're called upon to be holy with God's help. But holy, holy, holy. Wow. That's like saying, boy, he ain't just holy. And he ain't just holy, holy. 
He's holy, holy, holy. You know, that meal you're going to get today, Tom, is going to be good, good, good. And you better say so. This emphasizes, doesn't it? One, they talk about the Trinity, holy, 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 and the absolute immensity of the concept of holiness when used to God, holy, holy, holy. Got to say it at least three times. That God is holy. And he's the, the Lord of armies. Well, now, do we usually think of God as the Lord of all armies or just the good guy armies? We usually think of the good guys, don't we? Well, what in the world could this mean? All. Well, Lord of armies. Satan has his armies too. Do you reckon God can have any control over Satan's armies? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That, I, huh? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we talked about sometimes the Lord uses those that are not really his buddies to get his will done. Now, we got to remember what he promised last week. You get with me, you're good. You don't, you're going to regret it. The word of the Lord has been spoken. Remember that? Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. Yes. I, I got interested in this. And, Good. Um, so I looked up the Hebrew word for Lord. Yeah. Which, of course, I cannot pronounce. It's K-A-W-B-E-D-E. -E, but um, there was another meaning, too, from the Hebrew viewpoint. Uh, glory was a substance found in a cloud that settled on Mount Sinai. So it was... Not an adjective, it was a noun. A noun, and yeah. They referred to manna as being his glory, and, and we behold the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud when he was leading them. Um, I think that was more than just his greatness. I, I think from a Hebrew perspective, there were real physical things that came that were considered his glory. Yes, I, yes, right yes. Now. That it, that's why I say that. The word holy is, um, is a big word and means a lot of stuff. And it can be and is a noun. Uh, for us, we want to be holy is almost like an adjective. We want to be like God. We want to be like Christ. We want to try to live as he would have us. But holiness, and I think a word study is very good. Um, for those of you who didn't hear, Cheryl did a word study and finds oh, out glory. that... Glory, it's not holy. What did I say? Glory. glory. Oh, okay. The word I studied was glory. The glory of God. All right. Holy. What about holy? Did you do one on that? No. <laughs> well, we're going to study glory one day, and we'll use that. But it's, it's important to know what the words mean. And that one, I guess maybe that's why it threw me just a skosh. I'm thinking holy, and you're talking glory. glory. Right. But... Holy, 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 and the glory of God is all part of that. It would be I, like unearthly. Nothing. I mean, it would come from. Well, it, from definitely was not right. of the earth. Right? Yeah. It, the creator, not anything created. Mm -hmm. right. And that refers to the holiness. And, fr and, and the glory of God comes from that as well, obviously. All of that together. Um and and the the thing that I want us to look at too is that he's the Lord of or armies. He has control over all of it, good stuff, bad stuff, and what have you. And as someone has said, we've already won the battles, the wars won, as we pointed out last week or so. We have some battles to fight. The Lord is going to be with us, but the the victory is ours. Um, his glory fills the entire earth the foundations of the doorway shook at the sound of their voices and the temple was filled with smoke again describing what he was seeing and feeling and the emotion the experience the greatness the incredibleness of the vision that he's having of god his holiness and his glory wow he was getting he's getting ready to 
Say something big, I'll bet you. My wife wants to talk. Yes, dear. When I think of glory, I think about a glow. Uh-huh. Like when Lot, Shekinah glory. Like Shekinah glory. When Moses went on the mountain and the, the Lord's glory shone in his face. And yes. It was so strong they couldn't, couldn't Watch. look on it. Yeah. So I think of a glow that is. Glory, glory of God, glory. the glow that's involved in all that. The Shekinah glory of God. Very good. All right. Now, um, as, yes, Jack. That last sentence when it says filled with smoke. And, you know, this week, just listening to the news, and they were saying how much smoke was out in California and Oregon, and it actually lowered the temperature 30 degrees. Yeah. From, and, and you think, here we be here filled with smoke. It really means something when you put something in Absolutely. Absolutely. Any other comments? All right. And yeah. At that, um, uh, as a reference in here in, the, in our scripture today, look back in Exodus uh, 16 10, I think it is, it goes on there. As Aaron was speaking to the entire Israelite community, they turned toward the wilderness, and there, in a cloud, the Lord's glory appeared. So that was way back then, but yeah. uh, his glory to me is is like a light, you know, uh, a shining. Right. Uh, okay. That old hymn, all that will be glory for me. That'll be glory for me, absolutely. Yeah. Light, the, the, in a light that only God can produce, right? I mean, it isn't. Be glory for me. Amen. Song. Yes. Holy, holy, holy. Listen to the word that in those three words. Holy, 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 the song. Yeah. Lord God Almighty. Yes. Any more you want? Don't know the rest of it. Look it up. But it's a good one. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. Carol, do you know that one? We need a book. We need the book. All right, we have several people for you out in Radio Land, singing and humming and what have you. So, wish you were here. Want you back as soon as you can get here. All right, so now, um, this is God's glory that we've looked at thus far. Now, let's see what impact that had on Isaiah. And they've titled this section, God's Forgiveness. My goodness. Isaiah wasn't a bad guy, was he? What's there to forgive? Well, let's look and see. God's forgiveness. Then I said, Isaiah, after experiencing this, right in the middle of it, you know, you talk about, boy, that was a good service. I really felt moved to go forward. Isaiah said, woe is me. For I am ruined. I, I, I'm nothing. Because I'm a man of unclean lips. And I live among people of unclean lips. And because my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of armies. What's going on there? It has impacted him to such a degree that it has moved him to express, oh man, I, I feel so, what, insignificant? So dirty? Unworthy. Unworthy. And as we approach God, he doesn't want us to feel like dirt, but we are his children. And you know, your own children, when they were little, you like them to say, mommy, I love you so much, I just... I appreciate so much what you do. I just feel insignificant. Did your little people know that word? No. It's in the Bible. No. But so here he is just feeling uh, terrible. And he says, I, I just feel awful. I'm ruined. I'm, I'm a man of unclean lips. Um, what does that mean? 
that just means uh, he's not perfect and uh, unclean stuff comes out of him from time to time. Just, just a minute about, yeah, Paul? No, I was just saying, uh, uh, I was just thinking of myself that the Lord brought me from. Yeah. And, uh, and the sewer that I was in. Yeah, and yeah. Came out of that. Amen, brother. Brought us all out. Brought us all out. Um, Bob? Yeah, uh, Roman means he's about to die. That's what it's thinking about. He's about to die. <coughs> Okay, yeah. And woe is the that. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, now, what, Carol? This version in our quarterlies calls him the Lord of Armies. Yes. And the NIV, it says the Lord God Almighty. Yes. So I like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think King James says Lord of Hosts. Oh, yes. The NIV says oh, Lord God Almighty. Yeah. I like better because armies to me seems limited. God Almighty Christ is over everything. Yeah, and, and certainly that's that's what is being expressed here is that he is everything. He's over the host, he's over his people, he's over other people, and even armies he's in control of. Because we see that's particularly relevant on how this is going to be utilized in the coming verses, how that is. Paul? Sometimes we take the awesomeness of God too lightly. Yes. And he is, if we look at it, that each one of us in this room, God is present in, in that person. Mm-hmm. And you say, how awesome is God to have every Christian and he's to be present with them at all times. Yeah. I will never leave you. Yeah. Yeah. He's, 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 how awesome is, is our God that he could be in every Christian and know of every Christian's mind and every Christian's thinking. Just for one, just for me, it would, would bottle my mind. Yeah. Yeah. The awesomeness of God in that he is part of all of us. As his children, yes, yes. Share that yes. with, with yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know, one, it's uh, wouldn't it be wonderful I, I, to have an experience like Isaiah has had here, and we could have more wonderful experiences as we spent more time with the Lord, couldn't we? <laughs> couldn't we? But the we have to do that to uh, to to begin to understand the awesomeness of God. And in so many, even in Christian realms, talk about, well, I'm a friend of God, like God and I are buddies. And and I don't know just how to, yes, God loves us. We are his children. God is God. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Well, and we need to realize to the extent that we can on this earth, the awesomeness. Well, I was thinking that sometimes when we're thinking that way, we're, we're bringing God down to our level instead of lifting us up to his. Yes, and yeah. And that's what I think. Yeah, Clayton. When you mentioned that there, that God loves us so much that he died for it. Yes, yes. You know, okay. Yeah, um, that he died for us, that he sent his only son. I, I um, who do you love enough to do that for? Yeah. Wait a minute. Knowing the pain and the heartache that yeah. you were going to go through. Absolutely. All, yeah. And yet he still did. Yep. Now that's that's agape love. Amen. Amen. I think because we're human, we are limited by our language. Mm-hmm. I know there have been times when I have those giving to God his power and how he's worked in my life. I don't have the words to put that thought into spoken language. Yeah. Yeah. But that doesn't mean we don't 
and feel I'm it sure and understand. Can understand that power and so we're there. But it's good that we can have that. Exactly. It's so great that we can't express it. And we also know there's more to come. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, Bob. Yeah. God wants to have a relationship with us. It'd be not a one time thing, but forever. Yeah, a relationship. Exactly. And that that's what it's not just like um he had some people that um, uh, had some kind of contractual relationship with him, the children of Israel. This was a personal relationship at that time with his people. And all of what he had done for them, and I hesitate to say for us, and backs were turned. Totally incredible. We, you talk about we don't understand, we have uh, under those kind of circumstances absolutely no idea of how stupid we sometimes are. Mm. All right. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, and in his hand was a glowing coal that he had taken from the altar with tongs. I wrote up here, he may have said, now listen, this is going to hurt a bit, <laughs> but it's going to do you so much good. That's not in the book, but <laughs> so he touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your iniquity is removed and your sin is atoned for. Now, who hurt the most for our sins? Christ. Jesus. What a reference to Jesus. Absolutely. Absolutely. Reference to salvation through Jesus Christ. It's what I have in my notes here. It's all about Jesus, even in Isaiah, especially in Isaiah, the Old Testament. So, his sins have been removed. He has been forgiven. Now, there's another piece of this lesson that says God calls. God calls. Hmm. Hmm. You want to go ahead and see what we're supposed to do? Oh, good. All right. Hang in there. Here we go. Then he says, Isaiah, I heard the voice of the Lord asking, Hmm. Now, who should I send? Hmm. Who should I send? I think he kind of already knew who he was going to send. Well, now, who should I send? Who will go for us? Let me think, God said. I said... Now, if you were there, would you say, here I am, send Tom. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know a guy. Whoa, is he good. Even old Bob, he could do all right. What did Isaiah say? What was he? Now, you know somebody's had an experience with the Lord. When he hears the Lord say, who shall I send? I'm sending this person. Who will go for us? Here am I, Lord. Send me. <clears throat> right? I'm ready. Don't send me, Lord. Send Dale. <laughs> I've already nominated Tom. <laughs> All right. That's it. He's calling each of us. Isn't he? I mean, he's calling Paul, Hazel, all of us. Yeah, Bob? There's one statement here that kind of covers everything. Have we hit it yet? Or are you trying to get ahead of me? I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to amplify what you just said. When the Lord reveals himself to us and saves us from our sins, the proper, proper and appropriate response is Isaiah's response. Here I am. Amen. Once we once we're right with the Lord, that's our response. I'm uh, here. I am, Lord. Now, what do you want me to do? 
What do you want me to do? And you know what? He'll tell you. I'm sure many of you have had that experience. I've shared mine. Miss Highnote said I was supposed to be a preacher, right? Remember that? And that's why I'm bald-headed. She patted me on the head a lot. All of us have testimony. Yes. 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 And, and finally, I mean, all the way through grad school, couldn't get away from it. And he, and he didn't make all of us the same. Absolutely not. So it takes all of us. All of us. And he got, he's got something for you to do. And, and as I've shared, I had a pastor tell me, if the Lord will give you a peace doing anything else, he's not calling you into the ministry. Now, I think that's good counsel. Because if he wants you in the ministry... He's going to make you know it. Now, there's going to be any question about it. But if he's calling you to do something else, he's not calling you to do this other thing. So what, and we can all share that. I, uh, I did counseling for a while at college. Then we had the law practice. And we were, as some would say, alleged Christians. We were, we were Christian attorneys. And I told you that the kids that we taught when we first came here said I had to make up my mind, right? You can either be a lawyer or you can be a Christian. Which one are you going to be? But you can be both. You can be both. I saw a hand back here. Yeah, Clayton? Uh, he gave us all different gifts, too. Yep. That's in the book, isn't it? Yeah. To some he gave this and some to others. Now then, so here... Isaiah says, here am I, send me. Hey, I'm ready to go. Let's go preach. Come on. Right? Well, let's see what happened. And then God replies, go then, by God. He didn't say by golly. Go. Okay, fine. I'm going to go. Where you want me to go and what you want me to do? You got to be willing to go. Now, going sometimes is the easy part. Look what he's going to have to tell these people. Say to these people, keep listening, but do not understand. Excuse me? Hmm. Keep looking, but do not perceive. Make the minds of these people dull. Deafen their ears, blind their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their minds, turn back and be healed. And I wrote down there, and what would be wrong with that? Hmm. What's going on? Talk to me. Talk to me. Why in the world does God tell Isaiah, tell these people that have sinned against me and have rejected everything I've done for them? Keep listening, but you don't understand. Keep looking. Don't perceive. On and on and on because they might repent. I want to see who read the end of the lesson. He's preparing them for what he's fixing to send on. He knows what how they would react anyway and how they have reacted. All that he's done for them and been told and shown and what have you, they have totally rejected him. And enough is enough. Bob? This happens all throughout. It does happen all through the Bible. People and it, run away yeah. and pull them back. Sure. The pulls them back, you know, and there comes a time, does there not? And enough's enough. I had a hard time understanding this, but I read it a lot. A lot, time, yeah. A lot of times. Well, yeah. that, it, when you first just read through the Scripture mm -hmm. and you're not, haven't read the commentary and all the other Scripture, like up here, my goodness, what would be wrong with that? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? Yeah, about a thousand million times ago, you know. But he knew how they were going to respond anyway. How they had responded. Let's get this done. I made them a promise. Go with me, that's good. Go against me, you'll regret it. Is it a good thing that God always keeps his promises? Yeah, and you want to be sure. 
Huh? He does what he says. Does what he says. His mouth is huh? He cannot lie. Yeah. Good news, bad news. Kind of like God sees me all the time. Oh my goodness. <laughs> right? He does indeed. And that should encourage us to try to live as he would have us. And um, he keeps his promises if he says, here's the deal. Because the the converse of, um, as we say, the uh, curse that comes, or the other part, is the blessing. And that's what we want to do. And we want to get that. But we got to know if we don't, we get the kick in the hiney. We just do. Because he said. Then I said, until when, Lord? How long are you going to do all this stuff? And he replied, well, like I promised in the last chapter, until cities lie in ruin without inhabitants, houses are without people, the land is ruined and desolate, and the Lord drives the people far away, leaving great emptiness in the land. Though a tenth will remain in the land, it will be burned again. But the good part, like the terebinth, a tree, type of tree, or the oak that leaves a stump when felled. You chop down an oak tree, you got a stump left. Oh my goodness. All hope is gone. <laughs> Not right the holy seed is the stump from what does the tree grow from the roots from the what's going to be the stump when you chop off the tree we've we've all seen that type of thing where uh we've talked about uh, orange trees and fruit trees will be cut down and and even a different fruit uh, citrus fruit put in the stump that stump gives life. So from that which is left, when God gets done with all the bad stuff, will come the remnant. And that's where we get to come in as God's children. We do win this thing, don't we? We do win, yes. <laughs> yes. Stick with us. We're gonna we're gonna Okay. We're going to read the back of the book. Yeah, Carol? It must have been discouraging for Isaiah to know that the people's hearts were already hardened and they were going to reject the message. Exactly, but yeah. God wanted to give them one more chance. Well, he wanted them to know what was going to happen. Um, and and Lord knows that that could well have happened. Um, uh, they, they, it could have been maybe the, the one more chance thing, but a lot of bad stuff is going to happen because of what they had done. And um, that, therein lies another problem with, yeah, Lord, I want to do what you want me to do, but please, let's, let's make it fun, okay? Or at least good news. Let me show you the good news. But we know that when the Lord calls us to do His purpose, we don't all under, always understand exactly what that's going to be, what that's going to entail. But we give our life to Him and say, Lord, I am Thine. Lead me where You want me to go and give me the courage to do what You'd have me to do. Right? Yeah. All right. All right. Well, let's have a word of prayer and we're going to be Coming back next week, Lord willing, and uh, as uh, things calm down, we hope more and more of our members can come back to class. Father, we thank you for the blessings you give us all the time. We thank you for those who are able to be here this morning. Bless our members who are not able to be with us this morning, um, whether it be uh, the pandemic that they have concerns about or other things that are going on in their lives and we know that we have many on our prayer list and all of them in one way or the other are on our prayer list father we love each other we love you we pray for uh, all of our class members and others help us follow
to uh, answer your call and do as you would have us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. See you all next week.